Top Gun Maverick to some people is the long-awaited sequel to the 1986 classic film that I've only grazed my eyes on recently, but really, really appreciated. This sequel really does invoke the feeling and the vibe that everyone felt back in 1986 when they were watching that original film, and it also stars Tom Cruise back in the role of Maverick, and, well, nobody else from the original film, because they all outaged Tom Cruise. Literally, they did. But for myself, who recognizes a lot of modern day actors such as Jennifer Connelly, John Hamm, and Miles Teller, I was still very excited for the film. Even though they couldn't get everybody back, they still stacked it with a great cast. So does this movie stand up there with the original 1986 film? Or is it a nostalgia trip? Well, stay tuned. What's up everybody, welcome back to The Hess Project, I'm John Odalaza, and today I'm going to be reviewing the sequel to the 1986 film directed by Tony Scott, starring Tom Cruise, Plastic Kendall, two-year-old Tom Cruise. This film had a lot to live up to in my opinion because it's a film, a sequel, coming out three decades after its original film. All of its cast is pretty much aged out with the exception of Tom Cruise who looks like it was last week for him, honestly. It is very much a sequel to Top Gun, but you know, when you look at the cast, it, it you can't help but feel that reboot vibe, but Tom Cruise is there to, to really just wrap it all up and bring it nice together and it works. Does it hold up to the original film? Is it as good as the original film? And in my eyes, I would say yes. I would say yes it is, but as all sequels do, and as all reboots do, because we'll, we'll throw reboots into this category, they all tend to fall into this trope of nostalgia. And nostalgia can be good, can be bad, and can be just blatant and be like, oh, well, you kind of just went the lazy route and went all nostalgia-like. That's what some people think the sequel trilogy did. I'm not saying it did it or did, but... That's for another day. <laughs> Based off of what the movie gave me, there's a lot of scenes that feel kind of just taken out and repurposed from that original 1986 film for Maverick. And I, I don't know, the first 20, 30 minutes of this film, I felt that. I, I was just kind of like, uh, can, can you give me a, just, a, just a little something new? I don't know, because I just got off of the film watching it for the first time about a week prior and I, I don't know I, I just wanted something new but I can understand to take a step back and realize that this movie is supposed to invoke feelings and the vibe of the 1986 film they kind of they kind of deserved it a little bit I, I gave it to them I, I forgave it but I, I just couldn't help but you know mention that I have to mention that there's a lot of nostalgia factor in this movie, a lot of it. Once the film got to its point, got to the core of its plot, it, it got me. It really did get me. So let's get more into it. Tom Cruise continues to elevate himself and elevate the the bar set in action films, and this isn't really super action heavy. Top Gun was never really that. This movie could have easily went down an action route. One hundred percent could have easily went down that route, but they didn't. They they kept it pretty contained, and it feels it, it feels still family friendly to an extent. And I I appreciate that. I love that this movie doesn't deviate away from what Top Gun was in the original film, so I'm so glad that the feeling is still there. And I felt, dude, this movie tugs and rips out your heart. While the first Top Gun film, I think, has a lot of aspects that it gets right about everything, like it's got a little bit of comedy here and there that works, it's got a little bit of romance that really works, and it's got action and partnership, companionship, friendship that really, really works. And then this film, it amplifies some of those things and kind of loses some of those things. Like, I think the comedy in here is, is brought up quite a bit. And same with the action. The action is like an actual spectacle, dude. This didn't have to be a Marvel movie with explosions and CGI everywhere. There probably is some CGI, you know, establishing shots or whatever. Things that they literally couldn't do or something. But for the most part, I firmly believe every shot of a, a jet in this movie is Tom Cruise just, you know, having a night off. But when it comes to the romantic aspect of things that I didn't expect to like 
anywhere near as much as I ended up liking towards the end of the first film with uh, Kelly McGill's character and Tom Cruise. I gotta say, like, Jennifer Connelly is is, is a fine lady, but uh, I don't know. She kind of (laughs) just came out of nowhere, and she felt like she was just pushed into the movie. Like, she had to be there. We had to do some love, some love story for Tom Cruise's characters, because he's got to have some sort of happiness, right? That's all what this movie is about. It's about Tom Cruise. It's about Maverick finding his place in the world. Does he still fit in? Is he just still a kid, you know, in Top Gun. I don't know. He doesn't know. Jennifer Connelly and Tom Cruise, they look adorable. I mean, come on, two hot actors on the screen. Of course, of course you're gonna like what you see, but is there more to it, you know? And in this movie, Jennifer Connelly almost inadvertently feels like a deviation from the entire plot and whatnot. She does have a little bit of a history with Tom Cruise, something that happened in between the two films, I don't know. Let's go right into the cinematography and the score, which I thought were really big highlights of that first film, and they continue to be. This movie is so beautifully shot just like that first film it invokes a lot of those sunsets a lot of uh, dark lit moonlit scenes that look incredible and man all of the freaking fighter jet scenes of them filming in the cockpit looked amazing i saw this film in imax and this this just popped dude i had heard that they shot like hundreds of hours of footage up there just flying about now of course this movie is two hours why are you filming for over a hundred let alone hundreds don't know Maybe Tom Cruise just has that much time on his hands. Maybe he gets around studio by studio having meetings with people, flying his jet, and then he was also just filming. I want to talk about Val Kilmer real quick. He, in case you guys didn't know, he has throat cancer. And at a period of time, very recently, he had lost the ability to speak. Up until, if I'm not mistaken, after the shooting of this movie, he had, you know, rebuilt his voice with doctors through AI technology, but they did want to include him in some capacity in this movie. And the way they went about doing it, it was so heartwarming. It really does kind of tug at the heartstrings because I had no idea up until like the last year that Val Kilmer was sick and had this disease with him. But I'm, I'm really just touched by the inclusion of him in this movie and how well it was done and executed so hats off to the director joseph kosensky if i'm not mistaken tom cruise everybody you guys did a great job bringing this character back one last time and i i loved it i think it was beautiful where this movie really shined for me was the relationship that we saw very little of towards the beginning but it it did develop towards that second half of the film and it's between tom cruise maverick and miles teller's character rooster is his name in the movie he is i don't know if that's a spoiler but if you've seen the trailer and you know top gun it's like obvious he has his dad's mustache so it's him it's it's him anyways i really enjoyed their relationship in the film especially towards the second half it goes to a place that really invokes a large amount of emotion out of me that i just did not expect was gonna come out but it did. I told you guys, it wasn't a real tearjerker for me to see Goose die in that first film. It it wasn't. It still, like, it hit me, but nothing up here. No, water ducks were strong as but, uh, I don't know what happened here. I, I, I really don't. There was maybe two, three times that they just broke down, and floodgates. I love that relationship between Maverick and Goose in that first film. This movie just finds a way to tap into that emotion and just rip at it. Like, it does a great job at that and uh, hats off, dude. Hats off. All the hats, man. So to wrap it all up, when I go back to my points in the beginning of the review, I think it serves a really good purpose to the story, which is Maverick not necessarily knowing his place in the world after the events of the first film. He feels kind of lost without his wingman, Goose. And this movie really does do a great job 
bringing back those emotions that people may have had in that first film and maybe it may have been hidden in that first film like me and then just floodgates in this one it ups the ante with modern day technology and what we can do with action scenes and cinematography and score my god that score is so freaking good oh man anyways top gun maverick is really good and you guys should check it out if you are a big fan of that first film I think you will really enjoy this one. Like I said, the nostalgia will, it'll, you know, wane on you a little bit, but I think this movie's got a great story and a great message to tell to a lot of people out there. So thank you for joining me on my review of Top Gun Maverick. Let me know down below what did you think of the film. Or I mean, I don't know if you guys went to the Tuesday screening, but comment down below if you're planning on seeing Top Gun Maverick this weekend. <laughs> Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new, guys. And be sure to stick around because this Friday we're going to be saying hello there a lot more often. The first two episodes of the new Disney Plus limited series, Obi-Wan Kenobi, are dropped dropping and i'm excited as all hell i also believe that star wars celebration is going on at the moment right so you should probably pump out more star wars content right <laughs> i think you guys can be on the lookout for my review of star wars episode 2 attack of the clones it's looming right around the corner just got to get it ready, but trust me, it's coming, guys. Anyways, you might want to stick around because there is more to come.